Hi there. Um, what I'm going to do in this series of, of videos is uh, I'm going to cover taking apart the primary chain case of my Triumph Trident uh, T150V 1973 and I'm also uh, going to cover the rebuilding the gearbox. Um, now I'm rebuilding the gearbox on the uh, on the Trident because I have a slight false neutral between second and third and also I generally have a very stiff uh, gear change so uh, it's fine but it's been annoying me for ages so I thought it was about time I did something about it. What I've already done is I've already uh, replaced some of the springs in the outer casing and I've also replaced the gear selectors as well and that's made things a bit a bit better but it's not cured the problem so I've got to take the complete um, gearbox apart I've an idea what the problem is right there's like the main selector in the gearbox the main selector quadrant I think needs replacing uh, and that's that requires a complete rebuild of the gearbox and the trouble with the uh, the, the trident the this this T150V is that to get that main quadrant out you have to dismantle the uh, primary chain case at the same time because you have to get the main gear out and the only way to get the main gear out is by actually taking the primary chain case apart uh, so that's the, the the main work I'm going to be doing uh, at the same time since I've got to take the primary chain case apart I'm also going to be looking at the clutch now the clutch on this works fine but I've also got a T160 and the uh, the T160's clutch is so much lighter than this one this works fine doesn't slip and it's okay but it's really heavy and after a you know a couple of hours riding you begin to really notice it so I'm going to also have a look at the clutch and see if I can work out a way of making it a bit lighter uh, so we're going to be taking the primary chain case apart taking the clutch apart and rebuilding the gearbox uh, and this is the first of a series of videos okay so just a few things I wanted to cover before we get properly started. Number one, uh, I have put the bike up on this uh, bike hoist, bike stand, which is just like the best thing I ever bought, seriously, for the garage. And so if you can get one, I would really, really recommend it. They're not that expensive these days. <clears throat> and um, I think this one was under 300 pounds and you can, raise the bike to whatever height you want so you know there's no groveling around on the floor also when i finish with it storage is always a problem but when i finish with it it goes flat and then i put it flat against the garage wall so it doesn't take up too much room when i'm not using it <clears throat> really recommend those so i've done that then on my bike i have a three into one exhaust nice three into one exhaust uh, but that means i can't have a center stand because the center stand is in the way of the exhaust. So what I've done is I've just removed the whole system, which on my bike is dead easy. It's just one, one nut at the back on the silencer, then loosen the three uh, clamps at the top and the whole system just comes off in one piece. It's literally about a two, three minute job. Move that out of the way. Then I got my center stand um, that I carry as a spare and just bolted that on so that I can put the bike on the center stand on the on the uh, end on the bike uh, ramp uh, a couple of photos coming up of me uh, of taking off the silencers and uh, putting that that on Now, I've also then strapped the bike down so that if anything happens, it's not going to go anywhere. Now, I'm, you know, it's really important you do that because you think, well, I'm not doing much work. I'm, there's no point me uh, strapping it down. I'm not going to be doing much. Whereas, you know, I can guarantee, I mean, I, I know of at least two occasions when if I hadn't strapped it down, that bike would have come off you know, through silly, silly accidents. Just always strap it down. And I don't trust these little clamps that hold the wheel in place. I don't trust those. So I don't use them. So strap it down. I might well put another couple of straps at the back as well, 
just to be sure. But uh, so it's strapped down there, fine. Okay, now uh, the next job is going to be uh, before I start taking the covers off, I need to drain the oil. Now, this is a C150, so I need to be draining the engine oil, some of the engine oil, and the gearbox oil. Now, the gearbox oil, I'll see if I can see if we can see it. It's, uh, it's un under here. Okay, you've got two bolts. You've got this strange long bolt here, and then you've got a double headed bolt here. If I can get this thing to focus. Yeah. So this long, the, the long bolt is, uh, um, that holds the, what's called the plunger. It's like a long spigot that goes up into the gearbox and works on the main con quadrant. To, every time you change gear, that locks into a little notch. So ignore that. You're looking at this one. Now the small head is uh, for uh, checking the oil level in the gearbox. Because what's underneath that small head is a long pipe that goes up through the gearbox. It sticks up in the gearbox, little pipe about that high. And where the top of the pipe is, is where the level of the gearbox should be, the level of the oil. So that's how you check the level of the oil on a T150. There's no dipstick or anything like there is on a T160. What we're going to be doing is undoing the main nut, this nut, which is a, which is a drain plug. And that will bring out the whole, the whole uh, plug and, and the level and that will drain the oil. Okay, that's the gearbox oil. Then I'm going to drain the oil out of the chair, uh, out of the sump. Now, because this is a trident, the oil in the engine is shared by the primary chain case. So it's the same oil. Now on a Bonville or Norton or whatever, you often have separate oil in the chain case. In which case you're just going to drain the oil from the chain case but the oil is shared now um to be honest it'll probably not leak much but what i'm going to do is i've got this is a sump plate now there is no engine drain plug on a trident you have to take if you want to drain the sump you have to take this plate off but i've got a, an uprated plate uh which i bought which has got a drain plug built in this is not standard and so what I'm going to do I'll undo that and drain you all out of that and then I've got the uh, drain on the primary chain case which is this one here this is for adjusting the tension on the primary chain and this is the drain plug uh, just by the by this is a blank off this is where the, the the tension for the primary chain used to be on earlier models it's moved to here for later models but on earlier models, you'll find a little nut there because there's an earlier type of uh, tension tensioner. OK, so I'll be draining it there. So there's no oil. Now, um, the problem with uh, triumphs is they tend to wet some. So they tend to drip oil from the oil tank into the engine. So... If, uh, if you don't uh, drain the sump as well as the primary chain case and it's going to be apart for a long time, slowly the oil is going to drip from the tank into the sump and then out through the primary chain case when you've got the primary chain case off. So it's just going to be an annoying dribble of oil all the time down here. So that's why I'm taking this off. My engine doesn't, it doesn't wet sump at all because I've got a valve in, another story. But I'm doing it anyway to stop any oil coming from here through the primary chain case. So I'm going to undo that just to drain what oil's in the sump and then undo that. And then it, all the oil's out. The engine oil's out. The, the rest of the oil should stay in the oil tank and the gearbox is drained. OK, so these are all the jobs you need to do before we even start thinking about taking things apart. I'll get on with that now. And here we go. That's the uh, oil just draining out of the uh, out of the gearbox, and there's the uh, there's the drain plug. As you can see, it's two part plug, uh, and that is the uh, level tube which is attached to the small nut. So when you want to refill the gearbox, then you take take the small nut out, put the big nut in. Um, so uh, yeah, and then 
when the gearbox oil reaches to the top of that, it will run down inside and it will dribble out. And that's when you know you're at the right level. But for now, we're just draining the oil, uh, ready to work on the gearbox. Uh, right, so just removing the drain, there we go, from the primary, uh, primary chain case. Uh, oops. Damn. Just drop the uh, washer in. Never mind. Right. Uh, and then when that's drained, uh, I will undo the sump plug and just remove any oil that's in the sump. Again, just to make sure that when I'm working, I'm not annoyed by dribbles of oil coming through from the sump all the time. I'll be re re probably be reusing the gearbox oil and reusing the engine oil. The engine oil I know from my records, I've only done 200 miles since the last oil change uh, and similar for the gearbox. So unless I find bits or anything in the gearbox, which I don't think I will, I'll be reusing the oil. And as I said, the engine oil's only done 200 miles, so I'll be reusing that. So I'll just let those drain out, then I'll do the uh, sump. And then we're ready to start taking the primary chain case off. Okay, and I'm just removing the sump plug. As I say, this is an up upgrade. Uh, just to get rid of any oil sitting in the sump. There we go, which is, as I say, that's the same oil. Just have a quick look at the magnet on the end of the plug because that will tell us a lot about whether there's a problem in the engine because if there's iron filings on that, on that uh, magnet, then it tells you there's something wrong. But uh, looking pretty good. I will clean it up and have a proper look later on. Whoops. Uh, anyway, there we go. So that's oil from the primary chain case, which is shared with the sump oil. I'm just draining it so that, as I say, I'm not bothered <coughs> by oil, little drips of oil happening all the way through, uh, taking the chain case apart. So there's no oil in the sump, no oil in the chain case. And of course, we've just... Uh, drain the gearbox oil so uh, when this is finished uh, draining then we're ready to go and start taking bits apart okay with the oil drain from the engine primary chain case gearbox uh, ready to do a bit of dismantling so the first job the simple jobs which are always the hardest I think just by the by in case you're wondering what the background noise is wife's come down Put the washing machine on marvelous okay so the first job we have to do is to remove the brake pedal the uh, foot peg uh, rest and then we'll be uh, taking the clutch cable out but uh, yeah get rid of the um, got to get these out of the way uh, the easiest way of getting rid of the uh, Brake pedal is we're simply going to loose, uh, take off the uh, long, uh, the extended nut from the end, and then the brake pedal will simply just fall uh, down. Then we've got to get the actual uh, foot uh, foot rest off the foot peg off, and that's a total pain. Uh, but we'll come to that in a minute because basically it's bolted up under here where the chain is, and it's a complete pain in the backside to get to. But we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this nut, drop down the uh, brake pedal, and then we'll have a look at getting rid of the uh, foot peg. Okay, uh, hopefully you can see this. This nut here, this one there, which sits right behind the chain, that's the big nut there that holds the foot peg on. So what, what I do is, A, I put my gloves on, which... It's always a good idea because it's horrible behind you. Loosen the chain because you can't get to the nut otherwise because uh, the chain's right in front of it. So then, having loosened the chain, I can then get my uh, extended socket on it uh, because I can move the chain out of the way and remove the foot peg. And so I'm going to do that now. Right, phew, there we go. Uh, foot peg's off. That's a nut that was on the inside that you have to take off. It's a total pain. 
as I say, easiest job's always the hardest. So that's off. The uh, rear brake, I've taken the, uh, undone the nut and it's just uh, there now. So that's just hung out of the way. You can always take it off later on if it's annoying us. Get, you know, I can undo it from the back and get rid of it. I might do that just to get it out of the way. Uh, next job then is then to remove the uh, clutch adjuster plate here so that then we can remove the clutch cable, remove the clutch adjuster mechanism in there, free the clutch cable, so then we're ready to actually take the primary chain case out of cover off. Okay, the uh, taking the inspection cover off to reveal the clutch actuator mechanism and uh, there's a bit of oil in here uh, which is perfectly perfectly normal because uh, there's oil in the primary chain case and it comes through into into this housing there is actually a little drain hole here if you can see it which is supposed to put it back into the primary chain case don't don't worry that's fine if there's a bit of oil in there so what we're going to do now is uh, going to undo these two nuts which are held on with a tab washer and that will release the whole uh, actuator mechanism so that then we can release the cable I'll just show you that's the uh, actual clutching operation uh, and it works okay it is just quite heavy it works well note that I've got the clutch actuator mechanism starts as near to this stop plate as possible if yours starts up there, then forget it because it's not got enough movement then to open it. You want it, you want that as near to this plate as possible as when the clutch, the cable is tight and everything's, uh, if you've adjusted the clutch and that lever is up there somewhere, then it's never gonna work. Okay, oh, it looks like the washing machine's finished. That's good, that's what's bleeping. So I'm gonna undo those two nuts and so we can get access to the actuator mechanism. Right, the uh, sort of locking arms are, are off now. They've been removed. And so now to get the actual activating mechanism off, we undo the lock nut and then the big nut that holds the whole thing on. And then, then uh, we can pull the actual mechanism apart and get the cable out. Okay, the lock nut's off and uh, I'm just unscrewing the big nut which holds the whole mechanism on. But just be aware that behind this mechanism are three ball bearings and they're the ball bearings that fit between the mechanism and the casing and provide the lift when you actually remove the mechanism. So when I remove this mechanism, I'm making sure I don't lose the three ball bearings that are behind it. Right, there we are. Just taking the mechanism off and there are the three ball bearings, two of them sitting in the bottom and one of them still stuck in the mechanism. And that's how it works. You see these ramps here. As, you, as that turns, the ball bearing moves up the ramp, which becomes increasingly smaller. So it pushes this mechanism out, which acts on the pull rod, pulls the pull rod out, which opens the clutch, releases the clutch. So that's how the mechanism works on these, which is very different than the normal multi-plate wet clutches. Right, so all it needs to do is only to save the ball bearings and then get the clutch cable off the mechanism. Okay, I'm going to get the pull the nipple from the clutch cable out of the mechanism. I just mentioned that uh, often, as is the case with this one, the uh, the cable is often jammed in there because of the the pressure on the the cable. The amount of force used to open this clutch is considerable, and the nipple tends to pull itself into the sort of clevis pin and uh, jam. So I, hope, uh, I have had them completely jammed before, but hopefully this one will come out with a pair of pliers on it. Okay, and then that will come off. And then uh, I'll undo here and take the uh, clutch cable out. There we go, clutch cable out now. It came out of the mechanism relatively easily. As I say, I have known them jam really badly those. So be prepared for a struggle. And uh, we're just about ready to take the outer cover off now. Uh, just one item of note, I should probably mention this again. This is the uh, the ramp, uh, and that uh, uh, guides the ball bearings around. Now, uh, on uh, earlier models, the position of the holes, if 
so the ball bearings, the, sorry, the ramps, these grooves, is in a different position. Uh, and later models, it's in this position. Uh, I think I'm fairly sure I'm going to check that I do actually have a later later one put on. And uh, if you've got an earlier trident, then it's worth definitely worth changing this ramp plate for an earlier one, uh, for a later one, because the position of the holes is that much better and gives that much more lift on the uh, to help separate the clutch. Okay, right, and that's the clutch pull rod. Right, all that, so everything's off now. And what we're going to do is then remove the Allen keys uh, from all around, not forgetting the two in the middle. Very important, obviously. And then take the uh, primary chain case out uh, off. Okay, so that's the next job. Before I do that, I'm going to bag up some of the parts. So I'm going to put all the uh, all the actuating mechanism parts in one small bag and then I shall put the cover and the cover screws in another bag it's all, and then label them and then put them in the plastic box so uh, you know so that I know where all the parts are and there's nothing gets mixed up and when I come to put it back together I've got all the right screws in the right order and so on I'm like what you don't want is a big pile of parts on on here and then you know before you know it one of these screws is mixed in here and then when you put it back together you think what on earth that screw for and so on okay so bag things up as you go along label them and then carry on yeah there we are bagged up i use uh freezer bags because you can seal them everything stays dry it doesn't get rusty you can put oil in there um and uh obviously you can write on the bag what's in there all right and then I'll put that into a big box uh, for the whole primary chain case. And so I know that box is a primary chain case and it's got all the bags with all the separate bits in so I can find everything and I'll put it back together again. So removing all the Allen screws, these are obviously non-original. Making sure I don't forget those two. And also don't forget these two smaller ones. Again, mine are Allen keys. Uh, these two small ones down here, don't forget those. Probably one of the major causes of broken cases is people trying to get them off uh, when they haven't actually removed all the screws although they think they have okay so I'm going to take them all out not forgetting these two not forgetting the two in the middle then I'm going to double 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 check that everything all the screws are out before removing the case yeah you see and even I forgot to mention that there's this other small one uh, just here okay don't forget that one Get them all out and then double, triple check. And also, this is another reason why it's good to have a hoist. An engine, you know, because often you're looking at, from up here and you don't see the ones down here, hiding down here. It's so easy to miss. Okay, so now we come to tricky job number one. And that is removing the outer primary chain case. How do we do that? Well, to begin with, I have checked and double checked that every single screw is out. And so important, I can't emphasize it enough. Okay, so all the screws are out. But how do we get that off as, uh, without damaging it? There's no, there's nothing to sort of knock against from the back. There's no, nothing sticking out. Okay, well, hopefully this is what we do. Because I've put that back on myself in the past, I use well seal gasket cement. I never use anything else but well seal. Now well seal is a non-hardening gasket cement. So when it warms up, it liquefies again. And then when it gets cold, it goes quite hard and sticky. So what I'm gonna do is, all I'm gonna do is I've got my blowtorch. I'm gonna heat up all around the edge of the primary chain case to hopefully heat up the the well seal so it's nice and warm and then really liquid again really thin and liquid and then hopefully the chain case will just come off i've got um, a rubber mallet just to to tap the sides of the chain case uh, but you've got to be careful even with a mallet you can damage especially fins you can probably see i i put it back to some extent but some well as i say previous owner obviously even actually trying to put the some of the head back on they actually obviously whack the fin to try and get the head down 
and uh, they bent they bent this fin. Uh, I've, I managed to bend it back, but I'm, you know it's not quite there because I don't want to snap it off. You know, the fins so easy to bend or snap off. Okay, and also so easy to damage these cases. Whatever you do, you do not want to be putting a screwdriver in that gap. You will damage the faces and it will leak. So, if we're going to go, we're going to get the I'm going to get the blowtorch. I haven't got much gas left, but never mind. Oh, oh there we go. And then uh, I'm just going to go around and uh, heat this up, keeping well away from the uh, petrol. Okay, I'm just going to go around, heat that case up for a couple of minutes, and then we'll give it a go and see what happens. Okay, I've heated the casing all around the edge, and I've put the clutch cable. Uh, sort of the ferrule back in so that's enabled me to put some mole grips on it so that then I've got something that I can tap uh, with and so I'm tapping that yes I've tapped that and it's just opening yeah it's just broken the seal on the case can you see that and so I'll have to put the camera down but then with a little waggling a bit more tapping and hopefully the casing will come off the other thing I've done, which I should have done before, as you can see, using that method, I've now managed to pretty much open that, but it's still very much on at the front. So I've removed the primary chain inspection cap, and so I'll be able to get a finger in there and pull and try and loosen the front as well as as well as the back. Uh, but once once you've broken the seal, you know you know you're you're on the you're winning. It's actually breaking the seal in the first place. Once that seal's broken, it's just a matter of time before the whole thing comes off. And there we have it. That's the uh, primary chain, outer primary chain case off. Didn't come off too bad. It just uh, stuck there, strangely. Uh, apart from that, the well seal, I mean, I used a new gasket anyway, but the well seal's let go, so the gasket stayed on. The inner and there we we are phase one completed so outer chain case off no damage done gently gently and now we're ready to start dismantling the uh, innards of the uh, primary chain case which we will cover in the next uh, next uh, video okay so uh, so far so good uh, and as we go, we will inspect uh, some of the parts for wear. Uh, so this is the shock absorber. And behind that is the clutch, which we come to later. Primary chain, which is a triplex chain. That means it's three rows chain on the T150. It's a duplex two row chain on a T160, which is now unobtainable. Okay, but everything's looking uh, as it should in there. So, so that's good. No... Sometimes you get a horrible uh, black mess in the bottom of the chain case, and that means that the the shock absorber rubbers in here have broken up. But there's no uh, no horror stories yet. Oil's pretty clear; it's just black, black where it often is just from sitting there. Everything looking okay. Phase one complete. <laughs>